You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Boardwalk Empire After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256. 1729. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Boardwalk Empire After Show. Hello, everyone. Bing is for doing, and we are doing After Buzz TV Boardwalk Empire titled You'd Be Surprised, Season 3, Episode 5. I'm your host, Kevin Undergaro. And I am here with Bethany Jaber and Kristen Carney. So we had a brief discussion about <laughs> karma. <laughs> and I think it relates, obviously, to one of our fans was writing in about karma. And we were talking about the characters on this show. And um, I just thought it was funny. Both of your takes. Bethany, your concern of karma. <laughs> Bethany, who literally turns her head anytime there's a death. I probably don't think you don't <laughs> kill even insects, I bet, right? Um, you know what? I, I discriminate with the insects. If it's a spider, I'm like, let's save it. But if it's if I, I saw a cockroach, I'm like, you must die instantly. Oh, so okay, maybe you so, do. So, so I do. I, I, like I, I discriminate with my so insects. So a sliver of bad karma got Yeah. Me. And then Kristen <laughs> tells me I think I have bad karma got me because, quote, I clicked on two dislikes on two YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. And I just covered my head like, you guys, <laughs> I'm going to hell <laughs> on a slippery pole. And no. maybe it's even spiral to make no. it like just so they can laugh at me as I'm like spiraling down to hell. No, because you're making up for it now. I'm anything not making up. Do. I'm starting to dig Any my hole. Any check so I can write, anything out. I can do. Yeah. You know, I think I, uh, actually that all truth. And Maria, who you know, I harass so much. I owe that to Maria. Like the last 12, 13 years, she's had me on the straight and narrow. Yeah. So anyway. You always need a woman for that, which I think could by the way, twist into this. Yes. Which speaks to yeah. tonight's episode with the women once again are all stepping up in interesting ways. Very bumpy. It, they have to. They absolutely have to, or this is a dude show. Without well, them. well, listen, <laughs> they're all stepping up, but we've seen them with a lot of power. But tonight, the road was bumpy mm -hmm. for all of them. Yeah. You know, so we're going to get into each one specifically. But once again, it seemed like a resonating theme. Rothstein is the only one without. I'd be refreshed to see a, a weak woman in the show. Okay, back yeah. up. To though. be honest with you. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Well, we had that with last season with mm -hmm. um, Lucy Danzig. Yeah. I, I like her, though. I like that because you see, because it's a changing time. And she wasn't totally weak. She wasn't. She manipulated. She used sex she to get what she wanted. She knew how to work wanted. it. She did right. have a baby by herself. So she wasn't totally <laughs> weak. She just wasn't really right. strong enough to survive in this yeah. world. But there were so many women back then that weren't like Margaret. You know, we're 100%. not really seeing too, too much, except, you know, in the brothels, mm -hmm. but the brothels. And then also remember the um, the lady that she originally originally met in the hospital. Right. Who lost the baby. Um, but I want to go back to something you said about Rothstein and his, and his sexuality. What was that crack about nothing below the pants? Is 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 he? Is it a Jewish thing? Is he? I'm just no, is yeah. it do, no. Is, is it something over circumcision? Is, is it impotency? Or was he just simply saying? Uh, and as I have here in my notes. You're, what do you say? You're nothing uh, but a uh, you're nothing but a weasel with a good poker face. Mm. So in other words, he's just saying you really don't have the balls. Yeah. You're just a weasel with a poker face, which I thought was great from Nucky because it was a great line, mm -hmm. and he does have a great poker face. But well, Rothstein's all about business. You don't see him with any personal relationships in the show, right. and regardless of what it was in real life, he's not thinking. He's not women. portrayed. Yeah. He's not thinking women. So. Well, look at that. That's but he did have a wife, you know. Uh, yes. Obviously, we don't see her ever. But again, all, you know, business is, you know, almost like w we saw Manny. Business is what gets him off. Right. Yeah. And then, but then, you know, I'm sure I'm very respectful with the wife if we ever get to see her. He just strikes me as that guy who can keep it separate. Yeah. He's a little, yes. a little asexual. Absolutely. I, I 
and I think a, a lot of that is cultural as well. I I, I don't want to like. Jump oh, you have to say but, that because I'm the racist. But no, I know. <laughs> well, it's a show about <laughs> race and culture, so it's kind of hard not to talk it's about really it. It's really hard. It's such a thing. resonating but theme. But I, I think that that's culturally as well. I, I I'm gonna take take a jump off the ledge here, but I'm assuming a lot of the Jewish gangsters were were fairly faithful. They kept the faith. I'm yeah, put your mic yeah. a little closer uh, to your thank mouth. Thank you so much. We're fairly faithful. I mean, we see that with Manny um, before he died, how he was with his wife. I mean, he was very... Uh, I just think, it go, you know, with... with It just seems that um, in that culture, family is so important. Now, family is, of course, very important in, in all the cultures. Mm -hmm. you, you know, Irish and Italian, you, know, you hear family first, especially Italians are crazy. Family, family, family. But... I've I've always said there's something really impressive about the Jewish culture. You know, I, I know uh, being um, going through the Catholic process as a kid. I mean, you memorized an Our Father. You know, Marissa, you're nodding your head, right? You literally had to memorize what? Yeah. An Our, Our Father and a Hail Mary, and you're in the well, club, right? Well, if you had right? to stand yeah. up in church, you would sigh, like, oh, we got to do this. we got to stand but, up But now. wait, but I'm going somewhere yeah. with this. So, Marissa, you know, you, you memorize about, right, two sentences. I mean, yeah, two, two prayers. Mm -hmm. In the Jewish culture, the amount of work that uh, someone of the Jewish faith has to do to really earn their manhood or womanhood in that uh, faith is incredible. Well, the work ethic and the confidence within also, the Jewish community is... But back up a second. Be before all that comes, what it takes to be in that faith, the discipline, mm -hmm. the learning... Uh, to just uh, recite your you know d I I in front your prayers in front of uh, a huge audience i mean at great great length there's so much work put into it and by the way uh you know maria greek orthodox mm -hmm. very similar yeah, greek is. school and and you know what mm -hmm. you know a three or four hour easter mass mm -hmm. you know to us it was like oh, 40 minutes oh this priest is great because he's only 30 minutes remember mm -hmm. like oh so it's just i i have a great yeah. admiration and respect for those those cultures and i'm my personal opinion is is that's why they're able Perhaps. to be more focused and more disciplined and you Th know they're bred that way they're by birth by dna that's just what they do when you're Italian, I yeah, see. Well, brother, DNA, and now we're gonna that's get in trouble. Different. That's, yeah, different. that's different. Yeah, it's no, quite, but, yeah. but your mic is still in your uh, face. Why, like, I don't want to block in your like, pretty face. Eat it. There you go. <laughs> okay, good. So, but what I'm, but I'm saying, it was but it's, I, it's just, it's passed down through generations yes. to be hardworking. That's but, what I'm saying. Well, but I'm, but I, and what I'm saying is, it starts when you're a baby and you're brought to temple. And some of my, you know, I don't know one Jewish friend. Do you know, even the ones that aren't religious and don't like, eh, I don't really bother with. Um, I don't even know if I believe in God, whatever. Yet they still observe all of mm -hmm. the the holidays, and they sit in temple for three or four hours or ten hours. They fast, and I I have so much respect, and I don't think their success in business or the general success that some of them have, I don't think that there's a difference. I feel that is why, and this goes on for two thousand years or longer, right? Maybe four or five thousand. You know, who knows? But that's what I see in the Jewish businessman, and I feel that the writing's good on the show because we're seeing it in Rothstein. Yeah, and yeah, you know, see, and so it's a much it's, it's business. Yeah, you, you don't know? see him naked with a leash around his neck. Mm -hmm. I, the one thing I really like about Rothstein is that he's he's the well, along with Margaret, he's the only one that's really honest with Nucky, and is, and is I love their. It's yeah. interesting to watch them go at each other because. I feel like Rothstein is the most superior, but then Nucky has more charm, mm -hmm. so he's got his bag of tricks. But mm -hmm. it was interesting because last week when he spoke to um, Mickey Doyle, Nikki, Mickey Doyle, yes. in regards to why he was on the phone with him saying, listen, I am never speaking with you again. I'm only speaking with you because this is the situation right now, but don't think I will ever speak with you again. He was almost talking to Nucky that way. I was surprised at how matter of fact he was with Nucky, um, because Nucky's obviously much higher than Doyle. Yeah, but he, he's matter of fact with him because it's messing up the business. Well, of course, but I would think there'd you be a little bit more of a man to man in that. He was man to man. He, he said was because he was like man to boy. I feel like I, a little bit with Nucky. He said everyone leave. But by the way, that's what you talk. How you talk to a boy who is, you know, using, uh, you know, this stupid schoolboy crush. Mm -hmm. To destroy, kill hundreds of people and whatever dozens of people, right. and cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, right. maybe. But beyond, be, but under that, um, Nucky was actually kind of 
pardoned a little bit with Rothstein by sending the men. Well, that's what I want to ask. I listen. So I want to. I want to. Yeah, I want to ask you guys about that. And I th- my opinion is, is, it's almost the devil. You know, he'd rather do business with with Nucky. Th- and I think Nucky is someone who can be leashed. He's not a wild dog. Yeah. And he called. He referred to Jip. They referred to Jip as a mad dog. And then of course we see him with the collar and the whip. All through the episode, and of course, running around that hallway, Almost that, foaming o- at the mouth. that overhead shot, it's a right? Dog. It was like in in the um, uh, in in the maze. You know, it was, he was Pavlov's dog. That's what it seemed yeah. like. You know, in the moment in the coffee shop or the diner with Rothstein and Jip, he that was the moment where you saw the way Jip spoke to the paper boy. Rothstein looked yes. at this. I'm like, no, this is not right. for me. This Great guy. pickup. And for me, mm-hmm. I wrote down that's when the Rothstein poker face dropped. Yep. For that brief instinct. He, he, you noticed second. him, noticed that, and you saw the wheels turning in his head, and then he went back to being Rothstein. I, it, it was a great that, – that scene in the diner was pretty spectacular because even Luciano's body language was like, you're Italian, I'm more comfortable with you, and you saw him leaning forward with his on, arms on the table, whereas a lot of the time he's usually – back here and but he was he was he, he was, was leaning ready forward to, to make that deal he last week he was leaning forward too um mm-hmm. with um Mer- Meretti. well Misery? i feel like Misery. Misery. i feel Sorry. like That's I f- okay i feel as though he was going to make the deal mm-hmm. and then when he realized no this guy is a rabid dog who cannot be controlled uh no deal i need you, you know not i need to right. get rid of you right yep yeah, right. well, I, but isn't that anything in business? You know, you have to go and see it for yourself to make the decision? Yes. But so he did the same thing that Nucky did with uh, the performer where he shook his hand great. and led him to believe that we're great, we're cool, we're going to be working together, mm-hmm. you know, and then just turned on him that instant. But they're, they have that poker face. Nucky had a really good poker face as well in this episode. Right, and th- you're right. That's a great parallel with him him and, and Cantor. Um, you know, s- switching gears a little bit, you know, Nucky continues to just, you know, fall over Billy. And uh, and I think Billy's a great actress, by the way. And the fact that we keep seeing her every week, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm buying into the plot more mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now. But Especially tying her back to Lucy. Yes. Where she's another one of these women who will be in and out. So and that's really all she is. So the way Cantor gets talked into it, you know, was interesting. And again, I, I wish I could take credit this, but I can't. Our dear super fan, Mike August, uh, wrote in and talked about Chalky. You know, sitting in front of Eddie Cantor, you know, Eddie was famous for his blackface. Right. Oh, so I'm Michael sure. Michael you are good. Right? So I'm sure. <laughs> and do you think Nucky was aware <laughs> of that when he sent them? I wonder if Absolutely. Chalky was aware of that. Absolutely. Oh, ch- I think definitely. Look, at Chalk, for Chalky's such a smart guy. And then he calls him Milky. I'm, <laughs> I'm, oh, my God. That was amazing. Writing the writing in that just to insult him, uh, not on purpose. Not on purpose, which right? To make I'm him a little bit that they matter. They hadn't. They didn't introduce the blackface because they didn't have time for it on the show. The, no, that, that I think no, no. I, I don't think they want to be that obvious. Or is it in poor right. taste? Okay. No, no. no I think not, not, not obvious. Show don't tell. There was a tease to it when he mm-hmm. said maybe I should do. Yeah. You know, he he went into it for a this second. Is true. But I think it's a a much better uh you know. It's a much better way of doing it to not say it. It's much more powerful. Right. And then to see those their faces, oh my God. their straight faces <laughs> looking at him, it was it, and it really was. You know, Nucky being a, goes back to you can't be a half a gangster. Nucky is a full gangster. Yeah, and, and I feel like that's the first time he's sent somebody violently. I I don't really recall anything in any I don't other either. episode. Well, to to coerce somebody in that way, and and yeah. by the way, all the gangsters were involved with show business. It was weird like mm-hmm. that. And a lot of them got their girlfriend's parts. Or d- well, he did the same thing with Margaret when he killed her husband. You know, he likes to step in for the women and really play. But that's the only time he'll send someone, I but think. But he saved Margaret. The, Margaret was getting beat up all the time. This is different. You know, they both, and that's interesting, their exchange talking about, you know, with Margaret and with Nucky, the fact that they've both changed. Um, he is stepping in. Yeah. But he's he's saving someone who doesn't want to be saved. You know, she didn't want the part that way. Now it makes Nucky look look like he needs the saving by him doing that. He looks really weak now. Looks like he needs someone to kind of keep him stable. I oh. think yes, in fact he's controlled by a, a woman. He's weak. Yeah. I mean, th- all I'm saying during the episode is <laughs> this has nothing to do with business. 
<laughs> but this has nothing to do with your business. No, it has nothing to do There's with so his business. There's so much crazy stuff is, going which on. Is re- which is how we open the show. Because he, you know, if this is about business, he is in the wrong. He's, he's distracted. People are losing lives. People are losing money because of him. So he, Nucky needs to get it together at this point. And I think he needs to self-reflect a little bit by looking at Owen. Because Owen was also having, you know, intimacy things going on with Katie. And Nucky was criticizing Owen last week for mm-hmm. doing so, he's but he's not seeing thing. himself. He's doing the same thing. It was, it was uh, go ahead, say What? No, I, I'm just, I'm actually going to, I'm jumping over to Jip, if that's okay. No. Uh, no? No, not I'm not yet. allowed to. No, okay, let's, let's why? Talk about because because Nucky? talk about Billy We're going to talk about Billy. I'm always on the move. Go, you know, my dad always said, you know, always on the move, going nowhere it's fast. It's the epitome of my life. It doesn't feel it. It feels like my yeah, life. It really hits you. So <laughs> many <laughs> projects, so many things going on in business. Da, 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 da. It's a hamster. Everything feels like a hamster. Like, yeah, and, we're, and like, and you know, <laughs> where are you going? Like, what, what's being accomplished? What's this for again? You know, right. I mean, yeah. and then I, I mean, anyway, I will talk about. G- I felt Jillian's pain, where she was just the where the accountant gave her the news about AfterBuzz. I mean, about the brothel. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> but anyway, but but always on the move, going nowhere fast, and that that uh, that, that hit home to me. Does that reflect at all, do you think, on Nucky right now? He seems to be doing a lot. Yep. Nothing seems to really yes. be going forward Absolutely. for him. Absolutely. Because how much further are we ahead from when we started? Not much. It's not, not much like further. there's a bigger house. It's not yeah. like there's more money. You know, where where right. are we? What have we right. built? You know, we. He's backtracked. He's backtracked. I mean, he had all that land that now went to the church. Mm-hmm. So really, where is this all? All yeah. it's so. The it only little forward progress we're seeing it's just a smidgen sliver, and that's him kind of connecting again with Eli. But that's that's it. That's the only a forward motion. Right. We've yeah, seen I would him. agree with that. Th- true, and it was interesting. You know, she said it was when Nucky gets to the part. Your dad was wrong. You know, so he still is so idealistic. He believes, and he's trying to be her father almost. It's like he's pushing him out of the way and saying, there you go. Great. "I'll help you, little girl. I'm your daddy." But he said something really interesting. What does it matter as long as you get what you want? That was my favorite line of the th- of the in- entire episode right? this evening. Yeah, that says so much. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah. in, And I think that uh, he's going to find out the hard way with and her. And he kind of did that as well. And I hate I'm u- losing his name. The the um, performer. Um, with the Cantor, Cantor, he said yeah. that to Cantor as well, because Cantor was more concerned Cantor? with his word, with yeah. staying, you know, convicted mm-hmm. to his word, and and Nucky said, well, what does it matter? That can easily mm-hmm. be changed. Yeah, like it was nothing. Right, like your word, okay. what? Yeah, Dignity. Well, I've never yeah. heard of that. <laughs> right, is that amazing? Yeah, you know, when when it comes to fashions and homes and luxuries, Nucky cares about that image, but when it comes to, you know, your actual soul self you know of course he's he wants to not make his concerned. girlfriend happy right. um it's you know very, it's I feel very, him, I feel it's him very simple it was and yet kind of just so greedy um listen I, i'm gonna talk about itunes for a second if you guys yeah. can continue to go and rate and comment <laughs> on us we appreciate it we you guys have been very very loving <laughs> <laughs> very supportive <laughs> We're like a family. Yeah. We're like Nucky's family. Everyone <laughs> loves us. Like, it's just a couple people think I'm a racist, and there's That's one okay. person who hates Bethany. That's fine. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm absolutely okay with that. It's always nice to see your name. They <laughs> right? <laughs> it is. At it least, just makes me laugh so much. At least they remember you're so cute. Um, <laughs> I anyway, I, I can't take it personally. Anyway, no, but we do love getting <laughs> the ratings, <laughs> and we love the comments. And uh, please keep doing because it, it just helps us with iTunes. Yeah. And you know what, guys? I'm actually going to jump, if you don't mind, Go ahead, to do what you Billy want. and Mrs. Thompson because Great. I think we're, you know, we're on that subject. Mm-hmm. And um, that scene that went down. Well, before we see the scene in the dress shop with our old friend shopkeeper Marguerite, before we get into that, I felt as though when Nucky earlier in the episode wanted to check in on the kids, the look on Margaret's face was it a little relenting? Was it her? being a little warm by him like that's the guy that I loved at first I believe it was because she I could help that yes she I could, she was, could help that relationship a little bit she could have done herself uh, some favors she could have but I'm I'm my yeah uh, my belief is mm-hmm. is that in that moment at at the beginning when they he said I'm gonna stop by the house and they talked about bodyguards when he said I want to step any the coloring books for the kids mm-hmm. um, I got two and I took that, I don't get a lot of crap over the symbolism, but I took that as he's got the wife and the mitri- mistress mm-hmm. and they're both getting they're both something getting each. Absolutely. So, but but I feel like she initially 
was like, oh, like melted a little bit. Like that's the guy I fell in love with. That's the guy I knew. And I believe that because I think at the end when he tried it, he said, let me look in on the kids. She just said no. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So anyway, I, I was like, oh, there was like a nice moment because I still like to see them together. Yeah. I, I felt a little sense of sterileness, though, with her. That's I didn't really get too much emotion at that beginning scene. I just thought a little bit right there. If I, you go look at yeah. it, watch the episode again and watch the actress, what she does yeah. on her face. I think it yeah. was... It was for a like, moment. for yeah, for like a millisecond, and That's then it. and then he's not being honest with her. But I and think she's like, oh, okay, I'll put up this. If, if you're not going to tell me what's happening, then and what she really needs is she needs somebody on the inside there, and she doesn't have anybody on the inside to find out what's going on. With no, so she, she could have Owen, she's, but she's, she's pushed alone. him away. But she'll talk to Doctor Mason when he's free. Right, when he's free. <laughs> so when he's away from hell and his but that's, fiance. But that's still not on the inside of, like, Nucky's inner circle. That she has, oh, no, no. She has no way of getting information of I what's going on. I think she's so disgusted that she doesn't care. I don't think she wants to know. It's like, you do your thing, I'll do I'm my gonna thing. I'm going to focus on wi- helping women. Right. And, and Unless being... her children's safety is in jeopardy. Right. And then it's then then you, you want to have, like, some clue. But... She's not going to get it. It's not going to happen at this point in time. What, so. How funny was, you know, she has, she's talking to another friend who seemed like she was progressive. The woman she was having coffee with at the, at the house, you know, yeah. talking about greater knowledge. Mm-hmm. And it's a little magical and mysterious or mis- mystical. Right. She said, yeah. Because to have greater knowledge as a woman, that would be right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mystical. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And obviously again, it's the terminology. No one can actually say outright that you want to, talk about vaginas and you can't say pregnant and you can't say you know you have to say with child and all that so that was just that pc that's the pc-ness of that era and yet it's so interesting because before oh now i'm gonna go off on a minor tangent but before the history like uh, before you know the church became the church um you know there was a that 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 paganism and mysticism and and women were worshipped hermaphrodites were worshipped um and and the w- the female body was like mystical and magical <laughs> so it's like that's right. kind of like the pamphlet they but ended that's up why with. it's kind of sad because how many <laughs> hundreds and thousands of years later are yeah. they you know you're in the 20th century and you're kind of speaking like Pagans, whatever, It's just whatever. like a, the mystical so. woman. No, it sounds kind of odd, but it just, I don't know. I just, I found I that a little I funny. I like the nun Yeah, so I don't think too many people do. Yeah. I don't think the priest probably even likes her. But a great moment by by Margaret to step up and go, no, we'll just continue on with the class. Mm-hmm. I thought that was... Yeah, I, I'm wondering if she's going to get in trouble oh, for that. She yeah. looked like she really wanted to stick it to the nun. She could get in trouble, but, you know, there's an awful lot of money that they... You know, I know. I know. Even as powerful as the bishops were back then, I mean, someone who's given the church a lot of money carries yeah. considerable weight. Yeah. So it'd be an interesting battle. And Margaret, Margaret had a long day, you know, so she's probably saying, she "F really you, did. you right. know, I'm doing this. I'm not really concerned anymore. What do I have to lose?" Right. You know. But we still, you know, I've been. I remember I was questioning whether her and Doctor Mason would get together. Doesn't it seem that way? Oh yes. Now that now that that his fiance has been introduced, absolutely, um, because it it has put an obstacle between them and their you want what you can't and, have. and their obstacle the tension between them was gone now because they're working together and so now this fiance is another obstacle uh for them so i'm I, i'm kind of i'm hoping for something i yeah, think I margaret think like nucky has something she should have something well, too she yeah. can, uh, she, you or know, they should just work it out <laughs> she did only find out about billy that day so she hasn't had the opportunity to rebel so against of all nucky. places to go to marguerite you know mm. who she's to crapped on her, and then she crapped on her back, and then, <laughs> uh, and then to be passing out those flyers, complete contrary to this showgirl mm-hmm. who's living, you know, who's living in sin. And anyway, so it was very interesting, the little tête-à-tête with them. Well, passing Billy the flyer too is funny. Saying, "I know you're having sex with my husband." Right. You probably need this. You may need this. <laughs> right. I love that moment. Right. There might be a little nucky running around that I'm gonna have to take care of. So that was that oh. was. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't think she would. No, think no, so? no. Well, they f- they have a follow up discussion about it, and she says all you do is want to you know help people, you know help women, weak mm-hmm. women or whatever, like women who need help, and, and you know she knows exactly who he is. They said they both have changed. Right. Um. And that do you, does that mean that means that she's changed and she doesn't need help anymore? Correct, because she needed help before. I think so. I think so. What do you think she would be without him? Without would she get some without of his money? Without having met him? If th- no, if they divorced or separated. She'd get something, I think. Yeah. 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 So yeah. she could continue I doing I, they're her. They're both Catholic, though, so I don't think that's going to happen. 
No, of course not. Yeah, so it just did. But yeah. what would her strength be without him? You know, her his name has elevated her to do these I good things. I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. She'd have some money in the bank that, you know, I think you know, yeah. she'd get some money maybe. But yeah. you're right. Um, it was interesting, you know, he uh, demonstrating bad form. <laughs> he said, mm. from now on we'll ask a, a s- practical questions. <laughs> Yeah. So he's more concerned with the way it came across than what he's actually doing. Right. And he, but he did say, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. He said, because I showed bad form. Right. So it's, I think what he says, this is, it's normal for us to have this relationship, this business partnership now. I mean, once you sold the land, you gave away my land, you violated our trust. Um, his perspective, mind you. And but we are Catholic and we are married and that's what we're going to show everybody. And for me to be in public in a, a dress shop was bad form. Yeah, and, and he, she is her uh, his and guys. And he apologizes for that, right? More than he is apologized for cheating. Right. It's just that we I put it in your face. So very interesting. It was also funny, uh, you know. And this has nothing to do with um, the plot, but talking about uh tapeworms did you hear the oh yeah and, the and back in the 20s people oh, would swallow oh. tapeworms who to get skinny because mm-hmm. tapeworm would eat the you know eats the food in, in your body and mm-hmm. you get nice and, and they're thin. long calories so gross. yeah is that so crazy gross. is that nuts I lo- but i love that yeah. i always i love when we touch on the history okay people let's um Geez, let's talk about now. It's interesting because we did. I can tell I didn't do these. I, no, this I kind of, I kind of no, grouped. You know I grouped the men and the. I think our topics were done by an actress and not a writer. Yeah, <laughs> well, I grouped the men and I grouped the women, and I actually. Oh, I how did fun for else. you! Oh, so <laughs> okay, so let's. By race next okay, time. so <laughs> let's talk. Well, let's talk about. Let's talk about Jillian. All right. And so Jillian's writing oh, the brothel, Julie. and you know our actor from The Sopranos, it comes back in and. Uh, <laughs> old man on a cane and L- uh, Leander Leander and yeah. the accountant and one of the things he's looking forward to is the fact that the world is going to be corrupt and fall apart and he's looking forward to he's dying so and leaving the world that way yeah yeah I yeah. feel that way though sometimes yeah well I mean we've made it I don't know 70 or 80 years since then so I guess maybe longer right 80 yeah. almost 90 years so maybe we'll make it another 80 90 I don't know but I but it was interesting him to say that but Clearly, the business isn't working. This is another female who's trying to she break free of the men. She's mm-hmm. trying to do something on her own. Trying and she's to be trying original. To, to have a, a different type of um, brothel than the usual ones. And she rarely you know? shows emotion. She's always really stoic. So mm-hmm. you know something. This is really getting to her. And we she's see breaking. at the end that she still is trying to believe that the son's really alive. That was what. I was surprised that I thought she was well aware. I mean, I bet you deep down she is, but she's trying to convince herself. Why would he would he make the letter? I don't know. She's so bipolar to me that I I I think at times she could believe either thing. I mean, I just mm, I don't know. Tonight she kind of I it felt like I thought she was yeah. writing that letter because maybe someone else would see it and so believe still that he's still plan. alive, right? So I think I'm she's torn, e- totally I think she's torn. emotional, but I also think she's planning. She's but being what, very what strength do you have from that to know what 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 power would you get? I mean, you would get the, at least the kid would get the house, the little kid would get the money, the right. grandson, and you I could know. you could maybe I mean, maybe that. he's going to write a letter back in and she'll be like, "Oh, look, I have the house." I and mean, he, basically I could, yeah. for me this episode is know. getting what you want by any means possible. And I think Jillian, this is the setup to getting what she wants, and she needs that house right now. And that was the the exposition that's been given to us. And and I mean, Jillian kind of always gets what she wants, so it's going to happen. We just don't know how. I mean, it's a, it's probably more of a predictions thing. Yeah. But I see that n- Lucky's not giving her money. The place is losing money. Uh, Jimmy's death's not resolved, so it seems like Jip comes in at some place at some point with some money and the fact that he's also weak terribly weak with women mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that and we already know he was weak with her and we know she was smarter than him in their first meeting well if they yeah. hook up a little bit and she still has some connections to well he likes redheads i like redheads yeah she, she's, she, and she's, she's a redhead, redhead. Yeah. right isn't she and well the girl he was sleeping jip was sleeping with exactly is a redhead so he's i mean he's 
He used to said that. He said, "I'll let the redhead's wa- mine." Even the waitress he slapped on the ass. Yeah, redhead. redhead. She just gave the look like. It's uh, like a really great thread. But I think she's a good match with Jip because she's like you said a little bit bipolar, she's and crazy. he's she's obviously crazy. well. He crazy can also. use, but he can use. She can use that uh, him as that uh, dog, you know. Right. So I mean, I mean, she can use him as the as her pit bull, as her as her dog. Um, uh, let's see. Well, I'm gonna oh, cause just because we're running short on time, I'm gonna. Oh. I'm gonna, uh, Marissa. I'm gonna skip over some stuff. I'll okay. skip over the 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 live read commercial. And let's let's see. Let's talk about Jip. So once again, oh my favorite maniac. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, I find him attractive, so maybe that's why. Is that the kind of not guy you not like? in the no not in the nah. not in the scene. His his style ain't my style. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> We're like, hmm. he's just cool. He's <laughs> fun. He's fun to watch because you don't know what he's gonna do, and. Uh, he, but he's. I mean. Uh, he really is the dog on the leash. He is the dog on the leash. He's, you know, well, a little brain dead. The leash is broken, and him running down that hallway. W- I, I just have to accept him as the villain. And, th- you know, I, I, I like, I never liked villains. Like, and most people don't. Right. And so I th- I it's, I'm having, I mean, that opening scene was Well, we don't have any, like, intense. last week we saw Al Capone with a really soft side, but yet we all know, you know, mm-hmm. he's the traditional bad guy, but yet they wrote him in a more elevated way to give him ups and downs mm-hmm. and depths. But they're not writing Jip that way. No, no. I mean, so they're really making it easier for you to hate him. So this, the I just yeah. Obviously, he's going to continue being horrible, be it, okay. really bad. He is going to continue being horrible. But was he affected? What 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 was going through his head when he saw the paper boy shot? Nothing. He's j- vapid. He has no. Wait a second. I don't yeah. think he has a soul. No, no he I paused and yeah. looked long. I didn't think he cared about him. Mm. It's not that. It's the child that's dead inside of him. Nope. Ooh. No, it's. Odd. I think he put two and two together that the paper boy <gasps> was there with the Rothstein. With Rothstein, right. and he, which doesn't seem like his uh, character, but I think he put two and two together yeah, to no say, you're totally right. Okay, yeah. the paper Good boy. Call. I said deliver my paper at night. Only Rothstein would know that. Yep. And so I think he had the realization. Yeah. Which you're so right. But now who is gonna who's gonna help Jip? Four men down. He doesn't have Nucky. Obviously, doesn't have Rothstein. Uh, what are his? He's got, he's the got Italians. Ma- he's got Masetti, he's Italian. and he's got uh, Masseria, and, Masseria, yeah. Masseria, and who's who's we know old, according to history, old world Gangster. Italian, but old the wor- man. But he's into the old country, right? He's he's not into working with Irish or Jewish. Nope. You're not, you know, hardcore Sicilians. That's where like it's all about that. Yeah, and we know Jip is that. Mm-hmm. He's from the caves, um, and no, he's quite formidable. He definitely has enough people behind him. And he this has all the right qualities me. for for it the mustache you. Pete to welcome him in. Right. I I will mm-hmm. like I welcome the challenge of Rothstein and Nucky by them. I think it'll be exciting. Oh, I think so too. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. I love it. I, I love I love when from I always talk about this whether it's Sopranos or Breaking Bad, or even Mad Men. I love when you can build y- each season or two has just the great Dexter too has the great villain, mm-hmm. and that has to be vanquished. Uh, it's fun. It makes it fun. That's why, I like with Homeland, you know, not to divert, I'm having a harder time Are you? because you know you, you you I'm used to I'm programmed for that. Like we have our wa- you know, and, and mm-hmm. to know that this girl is just going to take a beating. Claire Dane's going to take a beating for say however many seasons till she gets to Brody. Anyway, but now we saw Just Brody. Just wait for episode seven. No, but that's what I mean with Brody being revealed. So, Why wow, you're in that? That's right? my episode. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet. All right, oh little <laughs> little shout out to <laughs> Homeland. And by the way, our Homeland show, I think <laughs> they have like perfect yeah. five star ratings. I know Roth and John and uh, who else is Jenna on that? And, and Daddyus. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. they're kind of killing it over there. So, uh, but we're better. Anyway. <laughs> um, Going down the list, finally, we talk about Van Alden, the Iron Man. My man. Right? Yep. And um, Very 2008 uh, reference or so. The Treasury. The, the, what do you mean by that? Just Iron Man, just the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Treasury The treasury is, uh, the, the, the not the Treasury, the, the, uh, yeah. the guy, the agent that he oh, brought to the speakeasy. No. Emmett. Oh. Emmett. Emmett. Coughlin. Is his first is, name, is, yeah. It seems like he's stalking him, and he's stalking him. Um. And it's <laughs> all over a faulty iron. Well, that shows the paranoia that is Van Alden. You know, when he goes in, he and thinks he's so. being, he's right. being, you know, yeah. But it will drive you to do things. And his wife caught the paranoia because it drove her to. Go ahead, talk about the wife. Do, do you think wives like that exist? 
Oh yes, I, I, cause like she's not in 2012. I mean, I no. I love her. No, I love her. I think she's awesome. But I'm just wondering, I do b- they? A hundred percent. Okay. Me, yeah. M- first of all, I think the corporate wife, or any my wife, family. any wife that's totally <laughs> has the husband's back. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a, like a little, uh, you know, a little lady Macbeth. A little bit. A little bit. But yeah, a little bit. And um, you know, she is limited because she's a female and because mm-hmm. of the language barrier. However. Yeah. She's got her guy who's, you know. This is her family. He's solid and he's he's hardworking to her and she's got his back. Uh, and it was interesting when she rationalized everything for him. <laughs> like this is, oh no, this is what happened. You did some bad people who they think you bad. did some bad things, but they were bad. But you're and not bad. But you're not bad. And he he's like, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, and it probably obviously wasn't going to be exactly what he said no he would come out and say i'm horrible i did this i'm morally horrible he was about to spill his guts and then she nope keeping him strong enabled Mm -hmm. him to be yeah to be to fight the good fight and to keep on in his psychotic ways i just love how because of her language barrier she just broke it down in the simplest of terms and it's like bad i mean good yeah dory or (laughs) sometimes i'm like wow we talk a lot because it's like good people bad people (laughs) and you know and and (laughs) it's much simpler and he's he's still looking to build his house and and, and by the way not just any house a prefab house which was just being invented at the time Mm -hmm. so it was just those cookie cutter crappy like houses we still make today oh they're always were bad you know there's nothing like a good east coast house that was built a long time ago but those prefab house (sighs) um there's never any windows on the side it's very creepy looking in those homes what the prefab yeah sometimes i've seen them they're like no no window it's creepy it was interesting though that they even had them back then because i always surprising i had thought they were invented after world war ii but anyway i guess i'm wrong i'm getting the nurse is getting upset because i'm going off subject um (laughs) Anyway, I love he how kills she gets upset. There's a smile on her face. She's like, "Yeah, but I know, <laughs> I know." Enough <laughs> I so, so he kills. Of course, the wife uh, <laughs> smacks this guy with the head. They kill him together, and he goes to O'Banion and says, "I need you to help me get rid of a body." And we end it there. So, I think my prediction's unraveling from when I was here last week, and I said, "I think you're wrong. I don't think he's going to work with O'Banion." It's unraveling. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'm unraveling. A upset, right? yeah. Yeah, well. I'm a Work with is yeah. no, not necessarily. It still doesn't mean he's going to work with him. It means he he did one favor for him, and now I need the favor paid back. Mm-hmm. And that's how that works. mafia and politics always work. It's like mm-hmm. so. Right. So we don't know. We don't know for sure. Um, we know he's got Van Allen has a hell of a wife though. Um, yeah. I just want I just want the explosion though from. I'm Van Alden. It's just building yes. and building, and I oh, want to see the Hulk me. come out. I so want to see it. I so I want more torture from work. I want, want a couple more episodes, and I just want him to snap. Yeah, and today I thought he was going to snap I because thought. he said to his coworker, "Oh, would you put a bu- bucket of water, Over asshole?" The door. You know, kind of yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. So he was stepping out and talking back a little bit. I thought I, we were going to see more of it. I want him. In all his six foot plus oh God. Uh, glory, I want him back kicking ass. Just a little side note, Marissa. I saw um, Michael Shannon in New York City last year um, at a diner, and he walked in, and of course I know him from the show, and I just melted when I saw him because I think he's the greatest, but he zipped up his jacket and put his hood over his head like no one talked to me. And he kind of just seemed like Van Alden. He seemed really cold. I, you know, I mean, I've kinda, heard that his uh, yeah, acting-wise, yeah, he just he, he internalizes you know, a lot. Yeah. Goes and does it. He was with his leaves. wife and child, and it just well, was. That, well, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. He didn't want to yeah. be harassed. And, and by the way, in New York, which the cold. show is probably <laughs> wildly popular, mm-hmm. and you just do. And you know, it's funny. I can speak to this. Maria's a TV personality, mm-hmm. and part of her job is to yeah. speak to the camera and speak to the public. Mm-hmm. So it's it's different for her. But with actors, they're really trying to play a character. They want to do the job. It, it It's part of it that they have to be cordial fans but they almost didn't sign up for that they signed up really to portray a character right it's a tough it's a tough but you know yeah no yeah. i'm not judging yeah, what i'm yeah, saying yeah. is i get where like i know jack nicholson says he, he feels like he loses energy when he takes off his sunglasses um he likes to kind of hold it all in well, and then let it out on set yeah. or let it out in his character it, i mean he's he's just so enormous i'm sure he gets recognized all the time i think a lot of people can go through um because when you know 
they're not done up that's not as noticeable but like i mean how can you ignore him you, every <laughs> every if you see him in you the can. street everybody so must get I'll him listen, but I'm like a- Adia, amy adams she can kind of like skirt through the crowd a little bit girls are a little easier yeah i noticed that i because i noticed that's that with, with it's easy for me every with, day with, I with, with <laughs> no i'm saying <laughs> girls are no one notices me it's fine <laughs> it's weird even a lot of the prof- you can it's weird you can get a lot of the wrestlers i know the professional wrestling females mm-hmm. they're they People don't recognize them, but the guys they do. And yeah. I also notice with Maria, sometimes she's recognized, sometimes she isn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, okay, Gaston Means is back. You know, real true historical figure. Shady as anything. Um, and it seems he's telling the Department of Justice mm-hmm. that you need to kill a uh, bootlegger. You need to kill someone on the other side. And, and that's scary to, territory to make for them. to make them the to make everyone happy. And yeah, the the attorney general to keep the heat off the attorney general, uh, played by our friend Doherty, mm-hmm. who was also our not fr- kill a bootlegger, but Chris bring Mc- bring a bootlegger in or like under arrest. Yeah, t- yeah, yeah. Pick one they off. They want it. them live, right? And the guy is completely stressed yeah. out <laughs> because he's in the middle of it. Right. And who um, would they pick? Who would be the least? I don't know, but it's coming. It's just interesting. It's good writing. It just turns the heat up more. It the is. most interesting thing for that moment was uh, was Mellon, a true historic figure was also, you know, the Secretary of Treasury. If we know Carnegie Mellon School of Business, mm-hmm. he was worth a few hundred million at the time. And he was the one who calmly said, you were the ones who pandered to the minority on this. I told you it was going to, it was, it was fiscally idea. irresponsible to do prohibition. And now you're stuck with the mess. Now, what I found so fascinating is that I had a great discussion today with a political scientist. And historian, and uh, just how the universe works, I, I had no idea that it was going to come up in this episode. Mm-hmm. We were talking about prohibition, and we were talking about how it was so well crafted by the uh, the the Christian right at the time mm-hmm. that did prohibition. They took advantage of the ten percent of the people out there, the right, undecided, to the minority. They yeah. pandered to that 10%, mm-hmm. he was telling me, to get that, because they're the ones that sway the vote one way or another. So let's say it's yeah. it's 40-40, we're right down the middle, we go to those guys. Because like, mm-hmm. we always have our people that, like, I'm staunch Republican, and I'm staunch Democrat. We're not moving it's them. It's the that Tea Party. T- that's what he was saying. He's, he was saying, <laughs> what went on in <laughs> Prohibition? What it is. We were talking about Boardwalk, you guys. We were mm-hmm. talking about this election. Right? Yeah. And he was saying that this was seen... Back in the day, they mastered it. Wow. They mastered back to get prohibition passed. They mastered it. The group behind mm-hmm. it mastered how to mani- how, no, but how to manipulate the 10%. They knew it was just that 10% they had to get to. Yep. They manipulated them, and that's what controlled everything. And the Tea Party, that's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing going on today. It's and so crazy. when I saw this today, I'm sure... I am sure it was a subtle dig yeah. at what's going on today. Yeah. Is it your fault because you panted to these dummies in the Tea Party? So good you, luck with that. Yeah, good luck with it. Mm-hmm. And so this guy saying it too. So that's why I found that scene very interesting. Now, I have catches of the week. Do you have any news and gossip? I do not have news and gossip. Buzz. All right, well, we're going to pretend <laughs> that. That's good. No, Marissa, we can keep that going. So it should say after yeah. buzz. Catches of the week. Yes. And we have yeah. some good ones in from our dear friend. Michael August, okay. It occurred to Michael that Richard Harrow would be a top candidate to be hired by Murder Inc. in New York. This is the you know the the mob outfit that comes along later. Yeah. Um, he said that it's also of interest that Bugsy Siegel was killed by a military grade .30 caliber rifle, and his assassin remains a mystery. Harrow is among a few people who would have access to that type of weapon. Mm. A little play on history. The show may be driving at with Richard. So uh, that's interesting. Uh, he feels that Van, Alt- Van Alden getting uh, the ink squirted on his face may foreshadow him journey- joining Murder, Inc. as well. He, f- uh, he thinks huh. that uh, he'll get into the mob through O'Bannon uh, and then later hired by Murder, Inc. when O'Bannon is killed. So that's just that's really speculation. Interesting. The other thing is uh, about the cleanliness theme we saw in last week, he thought it was brilliant that the episode ended with the rain washing over the boardwalk, possibly symbolizing a clean slate between Nucky and Eli. It was also it was also interesting seeing Jake Gusek, as he later became a big player in the Chicago outfit under Capone, namely as a legal advisor, and was regarded as the brains behind the operation. This was um, the fat guy being bullied who mm-hmm. had the hygiene problems, yeah. the, the nicknamed Aww. Greasy Thumb. 
He was my okay. According to this is according to Mike, he was mild mannered. Uh, James was, mm -hmm. and Capone often protected him as he beat Joe Miller to a pulp. In 1924, a rival bootlegger named Joe Howard slaps around Gusek and in turn is killed by Capone in Heine Jacobs' saloon. Capone emptied a revolver at point-blank range in his face. And when Capone became sick many years later, Gusek made sure Al's family was taken care of. His nickname was, in fact, Greasy Thumb, which was played upon when Al commented on the money being sticky. Yeah. Mm. So just I thought those were some really cool really catches cool. of the week. So yeah, Mike and all our other fans, please send us more and then where can we find you bethany you're i am at bethany so just at bethany with an ie wow you got that you claimed that spot i did wow <laughs> and you're hearing the predictions because marissa's doing her job but we're not doing <laughs> mine but marissa i telepathically told you that our tivo got cut off so we didn't get to see what's going to happen next week hey but we can we can could we keep guess? predicting yes yeah. go ahead predict we're going to predict Okay, um, I'm going to say, oh man, all that Murder, Inc. stuff just, just like infiltrated my brain. So maybe next week we're going to have some Van Alden with um, Dino, and we're going to see how that goes. I think eventually Nucky's going to kill Billy. Just putting it out there. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, nice. I think he's going to go that far because we've we've already seen him kill like a, ch a child basically and go off the deep end. And I think he's going to feel really betrayed by her. And and by the end of this uh, by the end of this season, she's gone. Yeah, well, I can definitely see her finding out why they're continuing on with the musical mm -hmm. and her turning it I back I think on you're him. right. I yeah, agree. Yeah. And I feel like Nucky is the midpoint between Rothstein, who's no emotion, all business, yep. and Jip. Yes. all emotion. Yeah. Well, I and I feel it's no coincidence that Nucky is the one in history that survives because of that. Yeah. Mm, I see Jip going a little. Oh. Haywire. We didn't see that wrap up at all. He's yeah. still oh. naked with the. Oh, and he's collar, putting two and so. two together. No, war yeah. is going to heat yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With the Italians, and the one thing we didn't point out as a huge catch of the week was that Benny. Is Bugsy Seagull. Right, Yay! Bugsy Seagull. Right, so we know he's hardcore. Dummies we are. And he's ruthless. So, yeah, we know all about Bugsy, so yeah. it's going to be interesting to see. And now, again, another character we know survives past yeah. this era into yeah. Vegas. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, and, and it's touched upon a little bit in The Godfather with, with Hyman Roth, mm -hmm. who was more, who's uh, Meyer Lansky, and yeah. Mo Green, mm -hmm. who is Bugsy. Oh, okay. And, you know, and he was a little older, and he was his mentor. And you notice Hyman Roth, speaking of keeping business and personal separate, he said, Michael, I did not say one word when this great man built Vegas and there's not one statue erected in his name and he was killed. I didn't say anything. I just kept doing my business. I didn't react. Right. Remember yeah. that? Do you remember That's the Godfather? True, so do. it's interesting that they played on that, that in The Godfather as well. Yeah. So. All good, Spend right? Stuff. All, All good. good stuff. We are excited to be back next week, right? Mm -hmm. We we like we sat down and watched this, and we were like, we don't even have to go to the movies anymore because no. we go every week with the show. It's, it's really so, bad. Like, so good. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I literally, Sunday nights, this is, this is it. And although I hate you on the show, Bethany, <laughs> so where do I find you? You find me at, at Bethany with an I-E. Okay, and? And you find me at <laughs> Kristen Carney. It's K-R-I-S-T-E-N-C-A-R-N-E-Y. Okay, and you can't find me because <laughs> you can't hit. What you can't, can't see. see. Or what you can't read. I guess you can <laughs> see me on this. Anyway, hi, right, Marissa. <laughs> Marissa, how do we find you? I am at Marissa Movies, M A R I S A Movies on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the AfterBuzz TV fall lineup. We're doing about 50 shows. What? It's a good chances we're covering a show that you like. Yeah. And yeah. So. I, co I also just want to mention I co host the Real Housewives show. We're starting a Miami one tomorrow. So. Oh, good. It, yeah. Wonderful. It's, it's totally you like are, Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, you are. No, no, you know what we say <laughs> at AfterBuzz? You're rocking high low. <laughs> You're rocking high <laughs> low TV. <laughs> really so low. Have fun at yeah. the low. And you know what? Come see us at Jersey Shore Thursday night. <laughs> Even lower. Yeah, I'll way lower, <laughs> which yeah. we love. Oh, God. Bye, everybody. <laughs> From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Okay, instead of saying buzz you later, I want to say, when they were singing that song, uh, you'd be surprised... About the person, you know, in the room, right? Wasn't that so... Rev what song? Uh, the little song and dance oh. with Eddie and, oh, right. and Billy. Right, right. Yeah. About Nucky. Yeah. Okay, yeah. ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Bye. See you later. later.
expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.